perfect trophy, Robert. That's lovely, isn't it? I'll damn pick it up in case I'll drop in there sue me. You know? <laughs> That's and lovely. it's heavy too. Do you know what I really like about it? The, the names, you won't be able to see, but yeah. on the flights, all the names of the world champions that sadly we've lost. Well, there's Eric Bristow, Leighton Reese, Jockney Wilson, and Andy Fordham. That's a lovely touch. It is. Very respectful to those champions that we have lost. Lovely. And, and what an honour, what an honour to win this trophy. Yeah, name on it as well. <laughs> it's heavy, don't, yeah, don't touch it, you're right. Um, Robert Thornton won it this time last year. Can he take it home with him again tonight? Well, I, I can say he can, but there's any player that's left in this tournament can win it. You think all eight have seriously got a chance? I reckon one of, oh, one of the eight is going to win, obviously. Well, we know that. But they all can, yeah. got a chance to win it, yeah. because they've all played well, they've got similar averages, and they, they're up for it, obviously. And it's not like you, you haven't got a gap. If you're playing well today, you've got to give yourself a final push in the final and you've got to push yourself because it's a long old day for the two guys left. It's going to be hard work. Bob, this is a World Championship trophy. Phil Taylor won so many world titles here inside the Circus Tavern. Do you think it's in the stars that maybe he wins a seniors world title? Not seen his A game yet, anything like. But do you think Phil might get the trophy well, tonight? He, I think he could, but you could say that to any player in it. They well, could. What is it about Phil's game that makes you oh, think oh, oh, oh. Well, he's he, a potential winner? He, he can up, he can up his game when he's in, when he's in trouble. When we've seen him these last couple of days, when he's in trouble, he can push himself that bit, and you can see the old Taylor in him. That's the difference, and he's got. Over the years, he's learned to do that. Some of these guys haven't learned to do that. That's the, he's got the experience. He's not going to panic. He'll use his ability, and he'll push him. He will push him. If he's in front, then they've got a problem, because he likes to beat you up back. Mm -hmm. But that's his job. In a nice, possible way. <laughs> On Thursday afternoon, 32 players threw their hats into the ring to try and win the title. Here we are on a lazy Sunday afternoon, and eight are still standing. The four quarterfinals are on the way, back to back, and then tonight from seven, it's both semi-finals and the final. Defending seniors world champion Robert Thornton's going to play the reigning WDF world champion Neil Duff. Kevin Painter reached the semi-final stage in two of the seniors TV tournaments last year, so he's on familiar ground in the last eight. Mark Dubbridge has only recently joined the seniors tour, and he's played his way into the quarterfinals. Another player recently joining the tour is Texan Leonard Gates. He was in blistering form against Martin Adams last night and now plays Daryl Fitton for a place in the semi-finals. And for Richie Housen, it will be a career highlight to play 16 times world champion Phil Taylor at the Circus Tavern. Phil played in every PDC World Championship final when the tournament was held here. Richie's hoping he can pull out the plug and cut off the power. It's a big day for Richie Housen. And we can hear from Richie now. He was here earlier today and he's been talking to Helen. Richie Housen, quarter finalist of the World Championships. If that doesn't sound good enough, you're playing Phil Taylor. Yep, uh, it does sound good enough, but that's the icing on the cake to play Phil. Uh, it's a dream come true, really, for, for all the dart players. Um, I was on the Pro Tour for a couple of years when Phil was on there, and I never got to the chance to play him at all, so I've never played Phil competitively. Uh, never thought I would, um, but joining the seniors, it's given me that opportunity, so I'm very grateful for that. And yet last night in your post-match interview, you said that you would probably prefer to play Darren Johnson. Is that just because you're more familiar with his game? Yeah, I do know Darren's going quite well. But I was lying. <laughs> of course, everybody wants to play Phil on the stage. OK, I have lost count. Over the years, I've lost count of the number of players that uh, the occasion has got to them mm. playing Phil Taylor. Mm. Uh, I, I know you're in your home stomping ground, but have you given that any thought at all about you've got to play the game, the board, not the man? Yeah, no, I, I've, I've thought about playing Phil, obviously, but definitely it won't overawe me at all playing Phil up there. I'll just go up there and play my game. I'll be trying to win. Um, yeah, it's, if it was Phil 10 years ago, 
Oh, nobody beat him. Yeah, he would, <laughs> he's, he's just, I'm playing really well at the moment and I'm, I'm sure I can give him a really good game, if not beat him. Well, your, your first two games were good, but uh, a lot of players say, no, no, I know I've got another gear. Mm. Ha is there more yeah, gears? Yeah, I definitely have. I've, I've played a hell of a lot better this on the tour lately. I know it's slightly different up on the stage with the crowd, but I, I, I feel comfortable up there. And I just if I can get my A game up there, I can't see any reason why I couldn't really go all the way and win this, to be honest. Well, you're a local lad and you fill the place up with your fans. You feel like a bit of a superstar up there. Oh, well, of course you do. The so, uh, thing is, everybody loves a pat on the back now and then. And, and to have all these people cheering for you and wanting you to win, it's, it's, it's fantastic, yeah. But you're five minutes down the road. You did book a hotel. Yes, I did, yep. Um, not because I'm lazy and I want to be even nearer, but um, <laughs> it's a routine that I, I have. On the tour, you're staying from a hotel over the weekend, and on the Motor Super Series, you're in a hotel, and you get used to this rhythm, this routine, so I didn't want to break that. I wanted to give myself every opportunity to, to play well. We look forward to your game. I think the doors are just opening, so we better let you go back on the practice board before all of your fans either A, start hollering, <laughs> hollering and ruin the interview, or B, grab you for autographs and photographs. Okay. Richie, best of Thanks luck later, much, and who knows, you might be lifting that who trophy. Knows? Thank you. Very likeable bloke, Bobby. Lovely guy. Great he's, professional. He's, he said he's, he's got different gears. He's like Richard Gear. He is. He's a different gear. He has got a different gear. He can up his game. And he's a nice guy. A real big headed. Don't show off. Just gets out there, plays his game. If he plays well, lovely. If he doesn't, he accepts that. Do you think it is an issue that sometimes people go on the stage and they notice that Phil Taylor is standing by the side of them and it, 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 it affects them? Well, they think of Phil Taylor when Phil Taylor was the captain of the ship. Well, he's a crew member now, I'll put it that way. So they shouldn't be really, they should play the ball. I know it's hard, to, it's easy to say, it's difficult to do. Yes. But you've got to just blank Phil Taylor, don't even look at him, I wouldn't even bother to look at him when he's thrown, and just play your own game. Don't worry about it. If he plays his own game, he can win. If Phil plays, they're so close together. And the professionalism of Richie, that he does live five, five minutes, minutes down the road, but he booked the hotel room because routine's important for pro darts players. When you practice, when you go to the venue, when you get ready, yeah, it's important. Yeah. Well, a lot of them are superstitious. They sit in the same chair in the hotel to have their breakfast. They, they, they use the same bar area, they use the same toilet. They all do things routine because if it works, they do it all the time. I wasn't like that, but a lot of guys were like it. Rich has got a great chance against Phil, hasn't he? But yeah, they go. Yeah, they all, yeah, all of them got a chance, Raymond. Yeah, and it's going to be nice. To, it's going to be a right good day of dance today. Right, let's look at the order of play for this afternoon, just to confirm uh, the full lineup. Richie Housen against Phil Taylor coming up any moment now. Leonard Gates was in blistering form to beat Martin Adams last night, and now he goes into against Daryl Fitton. Kevin Painter against Mark Dubridge, third game on, fourth game of the afternoon. Robert Thornton, the defending champion, against Neil Duff, and that will not be easy in any shape or form. Do you agree with that? Neil Duff's yep. going to give Robert a game, isn't he? Oh, he's a good player, steady. I mean, I, I never really watched him play. I seen him play the final of the World Federation of Darts, and he said he's going to win it at the start. He said that on the telly, I'm going to win this tournament, and he did. But I watched when he played Liz Haston, I thought, got some bottle, this guy. Yes. I mean, he did dig deep and he, he played really well to do that. That's what you got to have. We'll talk about this over the course of the afternoon. Leonard Gates was yeah. magnificent last night. Great. Great dart player, great entertainer. Bringing that level of game back the next day, is that straightforward? Well, he played he played good in the first round, but we thought, oh, that's, you know, because he... Cause he they say he's not here to count, he's here to play darts. And the longer he plays darts, he'll count better. But he's a great dart player. I mean, he looks at the score, mm, I need that, bang. I thought it was entertaining. I really was laughing yesterday because you don't see that sort of form. He didn't miss a shot. It was fantastic, he was. And that's what he does today. We are ready to go. First quarter final about to get underway. Paul Starr will introduce the players. Welcome to the party, ladies and gentlemen. We are live from Perfleet at the Circus Tavern. 
This is the stage where legends played and dart and history was made and it's the quarterfinal stage of the Jennings Bet World Seniors Darts Championship. And we are ready. The players are ready. And it's tungsten time! And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Raynham in Essex, England, a winner of five World Seniors Tour events, please welcome the owl, Richie Hansen! And now from Stoke-on-Trent, England, a darter legend who's won over 80 TV major titles. He's a record-breaking 16 times champion of the world, and he's widely regarded as the greatest dart player of all time. And it's Phil, the power. So it's trophy time at the tavern. It's Taylor time at the Circus Tavern as Phil Taylor makes his way to the stage for another tilt at a world championship. This time, the seniors world championship. He takes on Richie House and a home hero from just five minutes down the road in a match that he is able to tick off his bucket list. The Owl, one of the qualifiers for this tournament, the best performing one, Usually I would start a day like this by saying something like 32 came and 8 remain, but it is more than that when you consider all of the players over the age of 50 entering the World Seniors Tour events to try and earn the chance to live their darting dreams, like playing the power in Purfleet. Will the Owl fare better than Colin McGarry and Darren Johnson, who some suggested may be played Phil Taylor of old in their heads, but we did see some of the Phil Taylor of old yesterday. A brilliant 1 6 1 checkout turned the tie against DJ, and he is through to the quarterfinals and in pursuit. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. First set, first leg. It's Richie to throw first. Come on. A chance to lay his hands on that beautiful trophy, but you can already hear that the crowd will be on the side of this man. I'm Chris Murphy, a slight change in the commentary box for today. Delighted to welcome along 100. another kid in a sweet shop in Matthew Edgar. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, I think Kid in a Sweet Shop analyzes this perfectly. It reminds me of a movie, Rocky Balboa. And in that film, 
Rocky Balboa went over to the commentary team and said hello. And the commentator turned around and said, I can't believe I'm about to commentate on a Rocky Balboa match. That's how I feel right now about to watch Phil Taylor. That's how this audience feel right now. Five years ago, he retired when he went out to Rob Cross at the Alexandra Palace. And certainly, Richie Howson feels like that. We heard him talking to Helen Chamberlain before the off. And he was saying, what a dream come true. He probably thought this opportunity would never happen as well. Yeah, mentioned that he did play on the Pro Tour in PDC no, Dance for a couple of years and never actually got drawn against Phil Taylor. You did once, Matt, didn't you? How did that go? We, can we skip over that bit <laughs> and we'll, uh, we'll, en we'll enjoy Richie Howson for this moment. I think I lost to Richie Howson as well, actually, so we won't talk about either Richie. of those ones. Richie Howson's best on the PDC Tour was a quarter-final. And that instantly comes to my mind because he beat me in the last 16. Yeah, very different places in their career, as you say. Taylor retired, tempted out of it by the, the lure of the tavern and the World Seniors Tour. Richie House and very much the dominant force on that tour, a winner of five of the events that have been held away from the big stages, and he's made it through to, to most of the big televised events as well, going deep in the Masters at Lakeside, reaching the semi-finals last year. Yeah, he lost in that one to David Cameron, who actually went on to lift the title that week. Someone he got his revenge against, actually, in this very event. He drew David Cameron in the opening round, said that was a nasty draw. It really was for both players, because they're both sort of the top dogs, really, of that seniors ranking system. Of course, Cameron going on to beat Taylor in the final. House and May then have won well, his chance well, to play the great man. They've gone, but here he is with a, a front row seat for Phil Taylor, trying to take out 157. We saw the 161 yesterday. We're not going to see another one added to the role of big finishers no, just yet. Yeah. But we did see in that match, uh, maybe not a massive improvement in terms of the averages, but in the way that he was throwing his darts and certainly towards the end of the game, Taylor started to find his feet. I think that's what really interests me the most, really, when we talk about Phil Taylor, because he says 60. in his interviews he knows what he's doing wrong. If he can put that right, we could be about to watch Phil Taylor lift another title today. Awkward. Game shot the Didn't front have leg. an awful lot of the bed to aim at there. Went to the right hand side, so pinned Phil it in the corner. First. It's a break of throw. And Richie House are now left under no illusions to how hard the task may be. It all comes down as well to what is Richie Howson doing up there? Who is he playing? Is he playing the 2023 the version 14. of Phil Taylor? Or is he playing Phil Taylor, the man? widely regarded as the greatest player that has ever picked up a dart. I yeah, like the way that Bobby George put it at the top of the show. He used to be the captain of the ship. Now he's just a crewmate and they've got to try and see him that way. In fact, Richie Housen should be seeing himself as a favourite to win this match based on the form the pair have produced over the last 12 months. Especially as you say, with those sort of back-to-back -back titles. But Phil Taylor reckons he knows what he was doing wrong. He maybe has thought it out, because this is an absolute perfect start for Phil Taylor. He broke the throw in the opening leg, and he's finding that first dart just on the bottom wire where Phil Taylor ideally likes it to be, the old stacker darts. 137. Yeah, many of his darts in and around the treble yesterday. That's the way he put it. He was throwing some beautiful darts, as he described them, but they weren't quite going in. Well, the early signs in this match are they are going in. Yeah, and that can lead to frustration as well when you're getting so close and it's not going in. Then we tend to see the player having that squinty look where they close their eyes and they have a look from each side. And they think eventually this is surely going to start happening. 40. Is today that day for Phil Taylor? This is the first of the four quarterfinals all played in the afternoon session before the semis and final are completed this evening. Following this one will be 66. the leading light of yesterday's action. Leonard Gates taking on Richard Darren Fitton. Kevin Painter meets Mark Dubridge and Robert Thornton. Defending champion continues his title tilt against the confident WDF world champion Neil Duff. Phil Carl, 115. He to start on the treble 19 there, but the three leaves him no shot. He will be able to pick the double of choice. Richard Carl, 116 on this occasion. 
would be tops for house and if he can find a treble 20 in a single he gets the treble single for tops or tops for double 10. 100 Billy car 32 would have been one way to do it but couldn't get the ultra important bit at the end of the leg and Phil Taylor reacquainted with double 16 Taylor. and already looking Game as on. good as we've seen him in any of the seniors events he's played over the last 12 months and is that possibly a little sign already of the early nerves of Richie Howson because he threw that to stay away from the treble 20 not wanting to bust and he threw over safe and ended up going in the tops Here he comes again. 125. We were all pondering the question before the game, would Richie Housen be playing the Phil Taylor? 95. Of 10, 15, 20 years ago, or the Phil Taylor of now? Well, he's not having much choice in the matter. It's not about his, how he's playing him mentally here, Phil Taylor. He's producing the darts of yesteryear. Which is very good signs for Phil Taylor fans and those romantics who would like to see Phil Taylor lift another one of these titles. This is the 23rd time in his career that he's actually walked into a venue where he could leave with a world championship. We know, obviously, he's won 16 world titles, but he's played in 19 PDC finals, winning 14 of them, five of them the runner-up. He had two on the BDO side, where he won both of them. 100. And also last year, he walked into this venue on quarterfinals day, losing 3-0 to Kevin Painter. But that was a day he could have left as the seniors world champion. Quite remarkable. 60. I don't think that you would get those stats spouted in any other sport, to be quite honest. This really is the owl against the goat. I don't think we'll ever get them in darts ever again, those sort of stats. The strength and depth in the tour and in the system at the moment is why he is GOAT status. Well, when he comes back to the Orkney, he's looking for 93 to wrap 93. up the opening set in double quick time. Sign of confidence going for the treble 19. And he gets a shot. 61. Richie O'Carl, 126. There's a bit of purpose about Phil Taylor today. Richie Howson had a shot at the 120 in the last leg. He missed it on the double 10. Won't be getting a dart at the ball in this occasion. A 54. slight shake of the head. Phil a shake of the head in the expectancy that Phil Taylor will continue this domination and take the opening set with two breaks of throw. Game shot the first Taylor's set. turned up. And with apparent ease, set, first leg, it's filled, it's he breezes first. past Game the on. owl. Who looked, I have to say, I don't know if you <laughs> thought this yourself, Matthew, slightly overcome with emotion when he was on the stage, knowing that he had this big match, this big moment with the legend of this sport. And I cannot blame him. It is a big opportunity, and he's not playing terrible. What a little footy! Just needs to get this situation out of his head of the match that he is involved in here with Phil Taylor, which is not an easy thing to do because I'm sure he's been reminded of this all day. And certainly when you got here today, and sat down with Helen, and the, the phone would have been pinging. I think for Richie House, and the best thing to would have done is the moment he knew he was playing Phil Taylor would be switch that phone off, go back to his hotel room, not his house, even though it is only five minutes away, which I do find quite interesting and extremely professional of Richie House. One hundred and twenty-three. Yeah, somebody who certainly doesn't have the mentality of a, a top professional sports 100. I'm talking about myself Matt not you it was kind of baffling to me that when I heard that that he was staying in a hotel when he had the chance to stay at home not a, a route I would take but when you actually dig deeper into the reasons why it does make a lot of sense looking for the first 180 of this match and it makes perfect sense 
personally, I wouldn't have done it, but that's because I'm like most art players who are a little bit tight and I wouldn't want to have spent on the hotel. But that's a sign here that Richie Housen is confident he's here for the long haul. 81, Richie Wukong, 98. What a much better leg of darts put together by the Owl here. Hat-trick of two treble turns. And he's looking for an 11 darter. A dozen will do on double 19. 60, from Wukong, 123. It just becomes more and more important to get that first leg on the board for Richie Housen because the longer this goes on, the more the nerves will be jangling. 66. He looks for the treble. That leaves him the ball for a 1 2 3. 86. Richie Wukong, 38. That really would have been a huge blow to Housen. Who this time opts to split. After two failed attempts at double 19, he changes the plan. Goes for double 16, Six. but he fails to Filling find that also. 37. A breaker throw would have certainly made him feel better about this situation. But Game it's more the, the same play. for Phil Pitt Taylor. Taylor. So we saw him improve Pitt throughout Pitt last year when he played on the seniors, and a lot of the players in their interviews have been talking about Phil Taylor, saying how they expect him to be a better beast this year and a little bit more like the Phil Taylor we know. One and a little Yeah, tournament average of 83 for Phil Taylor, so he's outperforming that at this moment. Richie Housen slightly higher, 85.41. 60. But where Taylor really seems to have sharpened up in this match is on the doubling. Well, it's really interesting, actually, when we was looking through those stats and those numbers before this game. And when we look at the front nine average of the players, that real sort of scoring power, there was nothing really to separate the two. 100. And you felt that this was going to come down to the doubles, of which Richie Housen significantly better on the finishing than Phil Taylor. Maybe Phil Taylor was aware of that situation and prepped for this 55. exact scenario. And on the other hand, Richie Housen... Still yet to hit. A darts to do so in the second leg of the opening set. 131. Squander four more. In the first leg of this set, he should get more from here as well. We mentioned that 95. getting that first leg Richie on the board is going to be really important for Richie Housen. If he doesn't do it in this one, you will feel the worst because he has a 160-point buffer. He has the luxury here that he doesn't have to chase down the ball. That's why he switched over to the treble 18 rather than persisting on the single 20s. He could have gone on the treble 20 to leave the double 5, but obviously feels much more comfortable on the double 16. Is why he went for the treble 18 to potentially leave him on the double 8. Richie Ocar, 32. After five missed darts in this match, can Richie Housen now register a leg? Have to hit the same double twice. Or well, now hit two different doubles. Game and he manages the that. Leg. Richie, Housen. Richie Housen off the, the mark and maybe just in the nick of time. One thing Phil Taylor was very, very good at throughout his career was that mental side of the game, that strong mentality. 96. And he will be able to sense weakness. That's one thing you won't lose. He might have lost some of the ability in the delivery of the darts, but he certainly won't under have lost the reading of the play. And if he can sense Richie House and missing shots or playing too safe on certain plays, like that 120 one. shot where he ended up hitting the double 20, Phil Taylor will be getting a good read of that, like he did in his last game with Darren Johnson when we had that little bit of a battle of words spilling out into the interviews. What a little 14. I'll tell you what as well, Richie Housen in front of a home crowd, but you wouldn't know it, they're captivi captivated by the clash, aren't they? Silence, complete what? silence. An eyes fixed on the stage as the players are throwing. Yeah, Phil Taylor was asked if he feels like he's going to be up against a hostile crowd and kind of dismissed the question. 60. But it has been a real throwback, hasn't it? A real respectful darts crowd. Very much best of order when the players are throwing. That off 
first maximum of this game, the first maximum of the quarterfinals, goes the direction of Richie Housen as that respectful crowd hoists those 180 flights up into the air for the first of what will be many times throughout this Sunday afternoon and evening. Big leg, this, on the Taylor throw. The 180 has given Housen the chance. He'll be looking just to leave tops. 100. For the car, 129. When we talk about people being under pressure. Actually, I don't even think Phil feels too much pressure, to be fair. Treble 24, the ball. And after breaking the throw in the opening set, 49. Housen could Richard be about to return 40. the favour. Has actually hit this double already, but not to win a leg. Game shot on the third leg. Richie Housen. Gets the cover, and Richie Housen gets the break. Leg, Richie to throw first. So if he wins one of the next two legs, Came then on. the game will be square at the break. I just want to pick up on something I said at the end of that last leg, actually, when I said I don't think Phil Taylor feels the pressure as such. Well, actually, after his game with Colin McGarry, he was saying he was shaking and he was actually a little bit nervous because he's obviously stepped away from the game from the professional ranks from five years ago and doesn't have that much competitive play now in front of a crowd and certainly not in front of the cameras. This is a man who's won 16 World Championships. Played in many more World Championship finals. 59. Maybe if you're sat at home and thinking, how do I get over the nerves when I play darts? Maybe the answer isn't getting over. Maybe the answer is embrace them because even the greatest of all time is feeling the nerves here at the Seniors World Championship. 95. There's also the legacy factor as well, isn't there? The reputation to uphold, if you like. And I mentioned during the coverage yesterday that it's pretty courageous for many of these players who have achieved so much, none more so than this man. They go up there and put themselves through it. Yeah, because it must be frustrating as well to know how good Phil was and standing there at the back of the stage thinking, if this were a few years ago, I'd be having you right now. Well, we have seen that Phil can still do that. He played an exhibition in Oldham back in December where he beat Raymond van Barneveld in a head-to-head. -head. Now, think about Barneveld's form at that time. 106.76 average. Phil Taylor won that 57. match. 57. Richie O'Carroll won 170. Well, no need for the fireworks here from House, and with Taylor a long way behind. But he might want to give his fans something to cheer. 98. I think right now getting this game back to one all will give them plenty to cheer about going into the break. Taylor turned it on 100. at the start of the match. Richie the first Carl, four 72. legs of the contest. But Housen finally settled. And this is to make it three on the spin for him. Crucially, to level up the game in sets. Double 16. 40. Not there yet. And the man who had the best double in percentage coming into this just wilting a little bit. And that's a lot down to not what's in front of him. Again, what's behind him. 60. Richie McCarr, 32. Just wanted to apply more pressure. You could see that in the reaction of the great man. And it's double 16. <laughs> and it's all the second square. And all Hansen. to play for in the opening. <laughs> Quarter final here at the World Seniors Darts Championship. Taylor had the turbo charge on at the start of the affair, but Housen has hauled him back. And at the break, it is one set of feasts.